tech industry or caste system, legal case sheds light on discrimination. Three years after a Dalit, the caste formerly known as Untouchables, engineer filed a caste discrimination lawsuit against tech giant Cisco and two supervisors, California Civil Rights Department dismissed the case against the engineers but maintained the lawsuit against the company. This comes amidst growing awareness of the caste discrimination in the United States, with Seattle becoming the first city in the U.S. to outlaw caste-based discrimination, and California now considering a state law prohibiting caste discrimination. The Dalit engineer claimed he received less pay and fewer opportunities due to his caste. Despite dismissing the case against the individual engineers, the Civil Rights Department remains committed to litigating the matter against Cisco and ensuring company-wide corrective action. The South Asian community remains divided on the issue, with some viewing the case as progress while others believe it unfairly ethnically profiles Hindus and Indian Americans. Cisco and California's Civil Rights Department will begin the mediation process on May 2nd. So this is a case we've been covering for almost three years now. Um, and this is a very important update. So the judge in this case, so my understanding is that there are two lawsuits. One is against the individual engineers accused of the discrimination and one is against the company. And um, what happened was the judge has dismissed the case. So that means that it cannot move forward in the court of law. And exactly why this was dismissed, I'm not exactly sure. Cases can be dismissed for a lot of reasons, um, perhaps even like lack of evidentiary basis. But either way, what is happening is instead of this just going into like this doesn't disappear. So instead of the California Civil Rights Department and Cisco you know, having this conversation between each other in the court of law, it's now being moved just to a mediation process. So this is not going to happen within the strict legal judiciary system. This is now going to happen between the two parties involved. And this was really interesting because, so some people say, you know, that this means that this case is over and they're celebrating it. And some people are saying that, okay, maybe like the, the people who are for implementing like caste discrimination policies, they're like, okay, just because this case dis was dismissed doesn't mean that we lost because this case was seminal in pushing forward anti-caste discrimination policies in other locations, right? Like this case is often cited as an example of why this kind of anti-discrimination policies is necessary, right? But then other people challenge the basis of the case itself and the accuracy of this case to begin with, which raises the question if people are challenging the evidence on the basis of the case itself. And then meanwhile, this case has been used as evidence to show the necessity of anti-caste discrimination policies, and they've been brought forward into other places. And then it's found that the original one is not valid. What does that mean for everything that's been implemented because of this case in the meantime? That's something I've been thinking about very seriously because I, um, you know, there's an organization called the Hindu American Foundation, and we are not ideologically aligned with them. I think that's very easy to say. Um, we've disagreed with some of their opinions and stances on things in the past. And I was reading information, their, their statement about this case dismissal on their website. And they provided some more background into this case that I thought was really interesting. So, and they make an interesting legal argument. So I will read a little bit from the Hindu American Foundation website, um, straight from the website to give you guys some more context. Um, so basically the, the people who are being accused of caste discrimination argue that the California Civil Rights Department um, engaged in prosecutorial abuse and unethical conduct 
including suppressing and fabricating key evidence. In their motion, the engineers also argued that the California Civil Rights Department had no right to define what Hindus believe and no standing to assign them a religion or caste upon which presumptions of wrongdoing are made on the basis of their national origin or ancestry. The California Civil Rights Department was aware of the fact that one of the accused had identified as an agnostic for over 20 years and was still falsely identified as a Hindu by the state. Based on a December case management filing, the California Civil Rights Department withdrawal of its case was premised on um, the, the two accused withdrawing their motion for sanctions. Um, so I thought that was very interesting additional information. Armin, with what I what do you think about what I just told you? Or do you have any questions? Yeah, so the case being dismissed, that doesn't mean that it wasn't there was nothing there, just to be clear, right? So not necessarily. Three, yeah, not necessarily. So we don't even know. But there's three if I if I understand it correctly, um Either something anti-caste uh, discriminatory happened, okay, um, and this law is good at the same time, right? Or we have um, something didn't happen, you know, nothing. This was not a good case, but still, the law is it, the law could be used, still useful, right? Even if this specific case was not a good case. To, to as an example of anti-caste discrimination that doesn't mean that the law is not helpful and then the third option is neither the case the case is not a good example of anti-caste discrimination and the law is also not helpful right mm -hmm. um so which one of these three do you think it is i with this cisco case i'm going to be completely mm -hmm. honest i am withholding my judgment at this point with the knowledge that I have available to me. Mm. I'm not convinced by one side or the other. I have yeah. legitimate questions and skepticism about the claims of both parties, frankly. Mm. So I'm not going to be dogmatically like, oh yeah, this, this engineer that says that he was discriminated against 100% was. I don't know if that's true because they also provide more information about how he he claims that he was denied certain opportunities because of his cast and they his managers contend that he was actively recruited to join the team that there were other Dalit people on their team that were also given opportunities and given promotions and that he was actually offered a very generous starting package with stock grants valued in the millions so they're saying you were denied all these opportunities blah 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 we like actively recruited you like we like we tried to pull you in we offered you all this stuff we gave you these benefits blah 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 so yeah that's the flip side right so we, yeah, um, so we don't know so it's easy it's easy answer we don't know easy yeah. answer but then yeah. what do you think i think okay this is a very difficult case because it it does raise a legitimately very interesting legal question by the mm. state saying that you are discriminating against someone because of you are because of the beliefs and beauty in you in Hinduism, essentially. That's a very simplified way of putting it. That's not what it's saying. When the person is saying, I haven't been a Hindu for 20 years. You don't need to be Hindu to be anti, to be bigoted against a certain caste true but when the state in their filings identifies you as hindu yes in, but in the that, documents then, the, the state then, is bringing against you they're so, falsely identifying you towards a religion that's yeah, a problem so that's the yeah that is a problem but that doesn't mean that we should throw out the baby out with the bathwater. so the filing was incorrect the filing was you know it wasn't done properly but we can't be like you know actually this is very telling that if we tell people that oh they're anti they're being discriminatory against certain castes, and they say like, but he's not even a Hindu, and they tell us that we think that anti-caste discrimination is only a Hindu thing, 
your the person who says like but he's not even a hindu they're the, the ones who are claiming that it seems like it's only a hindu thing we have even muslims who come out of a hindu background that are anti-caste like have anti-caste discrimination like so we have people who are in india muslims and they brought all that caste culture to their islamic belief and they have made new versions of it islamically even though islamic islam doesn't have any caste uh, be, uh, based belief system but they're not hindus and they still have caste ideology so you don't need to you could be we have a lot of atheists who believe male circumcision is a good thing it's helpful mm. we know th we know that this is an uh, this is nonsense and it's uh, comes from uh, an abrahamic mindset so we're like oh why are you saying like this this person um, believes this, he's not even a Hindu. Well, we have many atheists that believe in Abrahamic nonsense, even though they themselves are atheists. You you can inherit certain ideas, even if you come, if even if you have left that ideology. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, because when I look at this case and the situation, and it's it's because it's very easy to just be like, oh, this is someone discriminating against someone else and that's bad and we're automatically against that i mean obviously we're against discrimination obviously yeah. but when you actually dig into the case and dig into the legal questions that are being asked frankly it becomes way more complicated to me it becomes yeah. so much more complicated to me and when people say that having anti-caste discrimination policies could lead to a certain segment of society essentially being ethnically profiled because this system that you're criticizing comes primarily out of one part of the world. That is a very difficult question. Like I still, mm. I still have questions about that. People, it, I don't think that that concern is wholly someone just trying to get away with discrimination. What, what do you think about people saying that these policies could lead to them being put under special scrutiny on the basis of their ethnicity. Well, that means that we need to adjust the laws to make sure that it's targeting behavior and not certain demographics. Okay, you could make complaints about the laws, but don't throw away the law, improve the law. So yeah, it's, it's important so that in the name of fighting discrimination, we're not promoting discrimination, but just improve the law. Because we anti anti caste discrimination, I think that's a good law to have. If now it's identifying yeah. to targeting people with for certain ethnicity as more like you know as as to go after for this, then yeah, that's a problem. Then you need to make sure you're not doing that. You need to make sure you have identified that that behavior is happening. Oxymoron mm -hmm. is saying there wouldn't be a case against this engineer if he wasn't if he wasn't Hindu. That's why state label him a Hindu. Well, we need to make sure that. We need to make sure that, again, we need to make sure that we keep the law, but we make the law so that it doesn't target Hindus. It targets Well, the it's not a law ethics. right now. Let's be clear. It's technically yeah. not a law right now. This is just a civil okay. rights dispute. But, and then Secular Sakai raises a good point. He says, caste originates from Hindu texts, but caste exists in multiple cultural groups in the modern world. And so my understanding of yeah. the, the legislation that's being proposed in California right now is that they acknowledge that. But here's my concern if we're being realistic most americans have no idea that caste exists in other cultures outside of south asia frankly well time, so by time by the basis it. of that ignorance they wouldn't even think to consider monitoring caste in other groups besides south asians this is but let's be honest what i think but is let's the be realistic honest. result but let's be honest it's mostly it's mostly an indian thing right now I mean, we have, like, right now when it happens, it's mostly an Indian thing. Well, and also just by sheer numbers. By sheer yeah. numbers. Yeah. It is. It is. Like, that's, that's what reality. What do you want to do? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, okay. We have two super chats. Mm. Do you want to? Okay. So but I find this whole thing fun. very interesting because it is, it is very complex. It raises a lot yeah. of really difficult questions. So yeah. I hope people don't think that I'm... I'm really trying to think about this like thoroughly and in a structured way. Um, 
so it's two super chats. Ooh, okay. I'll <laughs> read this one. Gaijin American, thank you for another super chat saying Hanuman is technically outcast. How do Vaishnavas square this circle? I don't know. You'll have to you'll you'll have to ask them. Um, and Secular Sakai gave us a five dollars super chat. Thank you. Saying gonna have some cool stuff to share in Espanol with you guys soon. Shh, Sakai, that's a secret. You're teasing them. <laughs> we're we're gonna have some cool stuff coming very soon, you guys. And then when it's ready, we'll have a big proper announcement. But he just gave mm. you a little teaser. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, most Americans have no idea other cultures exist outside their own. <laughs> Actually, yep. that's not fair. Actually, that's not fair. Actually, Americans are radicals in the opposite direction. That's not fair. Okay, most Americans, well, not most Americans, many Americans actually go and say that Americans have no culture. And everybody else has culture. So it's secular Sakai is actually the opposite. This is not fair. I have I'm, I'm tired of seeing so many Americans saying, thinking that America has zero culture. If you want culture, you have to go to every other country except America. So some people are like the opposite. I don't know. So there you go. I don't know. He's saying, and, Dr. Morton is saying, Susie's surname is an example of caste. Her name suggests her Mason lineage. What the hell is a mason? Like, do you mean like Freemason or a literal job oh. mason? I have no issues in Indian singly being targeted the issues of South. First, everything you just said about my entire lineage is incorrect. <laughs> it's amazing how Oxymora speaks with so much confidence and think everybody else is an idiot while he says things that he has no idea. Of. Well, he he's continually no confused like about my ethnicity, and I find it very amusing. Uh, <laughs> and then he goes and brags about other people not understanding yeah. what he's saying. Having a coming from a clan is different than a cast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we we got another super chat before we move on. Uh, two dollar super chat. Gaijin Mayor saying Burakum is it in Japan. Burakum mean. What does that mean? It, it, I think that's the cast structure in uh, Japan. Oh, is that, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. That's a that's the caste that's the caste oh. in Japan. It's an ethnic Japanese people that are okay, yeah, it's part of a caste thing in Japan. Okay, interesting. It's part of casting. Interesting, interesting. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese god, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.